Just blessed, brother. Yeah. Yeah, just black excellence. That's all it is. Yeah. That's let's, let's, let's toast. Oh, man. Yeah, right off back. This, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, this okay. Is, uh, what, my con- this? this is my cognac, Le Portier. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's a VSOP. We won best tasting VSOP in right? 2022. Mm-hmm. So this is to your success. We're going to talk about that. Thank you, brother. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, boy. I might be a That's good right night. there, though. I might not sleep for about yeah, 48 yeah, yeah. hours. We're going to have to do something after this, man. We're going to have to do something. We got to go out. It's only 3 o'clock. We got to go it. out, man. We got to do something. We got to hit the club or something, man. I it. <laughs> congrats, congrats on the tour. Yes, sir. You got could have been records tatted on you. You're about yes. to start yes. a 30-city tour Ooh. where you're the headliner. Yes, sir. Talk to me about that. Man, uh, you know, I opened up for a lot of different artists before yeah. this tour. Uh, got a chance to open up for um, J. Cole, you know, 21 Savage. They were both on the tour. Uh, got a chance to open up also for Lil Baby and Chris Brown. Wow. They went on a a, a big United States tour as well. So right. I, I just figured it's time, you know, I haven't done anything for my fans yet. It's right. been six years. I've right. been going hard, going strong, putting out content, you know, doing live pop-ups, doing live shows here, there, you know. But I never did anything for my own fans. So right. now this is my time and an introduction to my fans to come out. And and show me love and you know and, right. and and also continue to like, it like get a get a vibe for the comedy that I'm putting out you know so uh, right. yeah it's gonna be a great tour man I'm super excited you know I just got a lot of emotions like for real like uh you know nervous excited you know don't know what to expect you know my this is my fans first time seeing right me, so yeah you mentioned putting out content for your fans what should your fans expect. Mm. They should definitely expect a little bit of could have been records. <laughs> so the CEO gonna be in the building. I'll right. tell you that right now. Right. Yeah, man. Uh so yeah, they'll get it, they'll get a taste of all things, man. We we're actually looking right now for an opening for the tour. So Okay. Yeah, so this is this is gonna be dope. So you're looking for somebody, hopefully you can provide them a break that guy that you mentioned, Chris Brown, mm-hmm. Little Baby. Mm-hmm. Uh I think you opened for Jack Harlow, 21 yeah, yeah. Saturday. Earlier on. Earlier, early, early yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, so when you you said what did you learn from these artists because you mm-hmm. Chris Brown some of the biggest artists in, in, in their in their profe- chosen profession mm-hmm. and you're opening for them so when you're around them what are you seeing like damn if I get an opportunity to be a headliner man this is the way I'm gonna approach it yeah well I got I got the best of both worlds man you know I I went on a J Cole tour very quiet backstage right, right. you know not a lot of women. Yeah. Uh, just chill, <laughs> chill vibe, you know. Uh, then I got a taste of. Is that a good or bad thing? Nah, you know, we work, it own. works. Hey, to each his own, brother. A win, okay. you know. Duh. So it Duh. is what it Say is. No more. But you know, um, then I got a taste of little baby Chris Brown. Too, right. Where it's flooded back there. You can't even. <laughs> boy, you can't even. Get, <laughs> you can't leave your green room without yeah. seeing stuff. You know, so it, I think I'm gonna be right in the middle, man. Right. right. Just I like a little bit of J. Cole, but you gotta, you know. You gotta you gotta, you gotta have, have a little fun. Yeah, yeah. You gotta you, have a little fun. You gotta so, have like maybe not five hundred of them. Right, things, not five hundred of them. But two fifty. Two fifty. Okay. I do okay. two fifty. <laughs> I do two fifty backstage, you know. Nah, I'm messing around, man. Nah, I think the biggest thing that I learned from them, they they're so locked in, regardless of what's going on right. backstage and stuff. I had a chance to talk with all of them and like they're so serious about their craft and, right. you know getting prepared before the show and not having too many distractions before the show, maybe after the show, you right. know, at times. Right. But I think that that's something that I took from that and was seeing how serious it is and the preparation it takes to get right. to that point. So, yeah, that's that's a big thing. For I was me. reading when you you mentioned that you opened for Jack Harlow early, early in his career. Early, yeah. And I read I was reading that you showered at a rest stop and you were yeah. performing in front of 50 people. <laughs> yeah. Did you think at the time that you're showering at a rest stop and you're performing in front of 50 people mm-hmm. that you would later become the headliner of your own 30, 30 city tour and become this. Yes, I actually did because we used to have conversations, me and Jack, on the bus. We was on a beat down bus. Right. I'm talking about, man, look. Like, like, like the blue bird, the school bus, the school bus or the Greyhound bus? The, what, what the magic that? school bus. That's what, <laughs> <laughs> that's what we was on. We was on the magic school bus. Nah, uh, we was just stacked on top of each other and I, I had to come by myself. He had all his friends. So right. I wasn't familiar with him or everybody else he was with. It was just, I just had to come on and do my thing. And we used to have talks all the time on the bus like, hey man, this is what we want to do. This is my goal. This is where I want to be at. This is how I want to be. So me and him, familiarize ourselves with each other, right. knowing that we wanted to do this. So right. it was just, we, we both were on the same page with our goals, you right. know? So we, we we just, man, everything happens. So it's just like, we just continue to go right. and, and the goals only get bigger. So yeah, man, that, that's probably the biggest thing I remember from that tour on a series. Right. Yeah. When you're, op- when you're, when you're opening for, 
and they put rappers, R and B, whatever. Jack Harlow, I think Jack Harlow is an R and B guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. rapper. Yeah. And you get Little Baby and Savage. Yeah, it's one thing to open for someone like that, mm-hmm. and you're a comedian, comedian as yeah. opposed to opening for someone that's yes. a comedian also. Yeah. So how how would you prepare mm-hmm. to do something like that when the crowd is like so different? Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing I did, and and I appreciate the fans for adapting to it. I think I, I kind of created a lane for myself you right. know, where I've never really seen anybody do that type of stuff, especially not in the stadiums I was going to and, right. you know, just going out there with improv. Like, right. I'm literally going out there fucking around. I mean, messing around with the You uh, good, you good, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you got to make sure I'm going to Hey, we on Fox, ain't we? Yeah, yeah, you good, you good, uh, uh, you good. Leave it up, leave it up. But, uh, yeah, so just messing around with the fans, I think just, I, I'm just appreciative that they were able to adapt to such a, right. a, a big change. But, yeah, that's... It was definitely very different from what you know you're used to, but it ended up turning out every single tour was really good. Right. So, yeah. You allow fans on stage. What are some of the craziest interactions that you've had with fans? Mm. Uh, man, I had this dude. He came on stage. And he tried to get undressed. Huh? Yeah, he tried to get undressed on stage, man. And Who? and the, the the fans were familiar with him because he's been on one of my could have been right. records. But and you know I know he take his shirt off. Right. I didn't know he was gonna get naked. Come on, Joe. He tried to get naked, man. And and you know, we stopped it. We stopped right. it and right before it went. But he's he's a dancer, man. He's a hell of a dancer. We let him do his thing. But yeah, that's probably the craziest that has gotten on, on stage bringing fans on. Yeah, yeah, right. That's been You do you do a lot of uh, uh IG live because that was basically mm-hmm. like you were performing. That was kind of like your tour mm-hmm. before you actually got a tour. Yes, yes. Uh IG Live was was big around the time, like you said, during COVID. Right. COVID, everybody was just tuned in. And, right. and just like you said for your show, just it was like the main time. If you were doing anything, a lot of people were chilling back from right. accident. And, yeah. But for the hustlers, right. yeah. hey. it's like, hey, hit the hit the yeah. road running because this Cause is the time when everybody mortgage, was watching. Car payments, all that stuff. They still, and they I'm still telling do. you, I'm telling you, you everybody was watching. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> you got to generate, generate some revenue somehow. <laughs> You're not lying, man. So I think could have been records. We built up the fan base and even my fan base for like, you know, for comedy, just me in general, was built up during COVID. And I had everybody's attention. You know, they were doing the verses and stuff. And I was just trying to figure out my own niche right. for, for right. comedy, you know. So that ended up working out perfectly. But now we still do it and the numbers continue to, to grow. increase. Man. Right. Yeah, so. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and become an official member of Club Shay Shay, where we do something before two something.